James, an instructional designer at Learning Undefeated, a nonprofit organization that provides life changing STEM education experiences. And today, we're going to build our very own homemade paper speaker. In doing so, you will learn how speakers work, how electrical energy transforms into mechanical energy, and how sound waves are formed. In order to build our homemade paper plate speaker, we're going to need a few things. The first of which is some scotch tape. I also have here a hot glue gun. If you do not have a hot glue gun, you may also just use super glue. I have an auxiliary cable here. This is the same type of cable that you would use to connect your phone to your car. I have some magnet wire here. This is 24 gauge. It's pretty thin. You can use any type of copper wire. I would recommend something above 22 gauge though. And then we have some wire strippers. If you do not have a pair of these, you may also use a lighter with some parental supervision or some high grit sandpaper as well as some gator clips. And then last but not least, what we're also going to need are our paper plates and magnets. The first thing we want to do is cut up some strips of paper and we want them to be approximately a little bit longer than the length of the stack of magnets that you'll be using. Now that we have uh, the strips of paper cut out, we're going to take a head of magnets, our stack, and we want to start rolling them up. Now that we have this all rolled up, we're going to go ahead and tape it together. So with our magnets all rolled up, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our wire here and we're going to head and start wrapping it around our cylinder. I'm going to wrap it around 80 times. I would recommend a uh, minimum 50 if you're going to be using this, especially at 24 gauge. What I want to keep in mind though is that we have our magnets seen here at the bottom. We're going to be wrapping it here and we want to make sure that the ends are going to be sticking out maybe two or three inches. Now that we have our coil all wrapped up, we're going to go ahead and trim it off. So again, think about the couple inches that we want to have, and I'm going to snip it here. And in order to keep this in place, right, because you see the wires still kind of kind of come apart, we're going to take a hot glue gun, right, and we're going to tape it, put it all together. Once your glue has dried all the way, we can go ahead and do the next step. So what we need to do is to actually remove the inside of our cylinder. We're going to push out the magnets and then remove any of the external pieces of paper that we're no longer needing. So we only want to use the external one. We had about what four sheets. Oh, we got one more, and all we're left on the inside is this container. What I like to do here now is to take some tape and tape it along the inside as well. We can test the size of our cylinder by briefly taking our stack of magnets and making sure. It should go up and down easily above it. Because this is longer than this height, we're going to need to take a trim of our cylinder stack. All right, 
our next step, now that we have this cut out cone or cylinder, what we need to do is to hot glue it onto our paper plate. As we let this glue dry, what we're gonna do is take our two copper wires here, these are gonna be our lead wires, and we're gonna go ahead and also glue them onto the end point of our paper plate. With our top half of the speaker done, we're now gonna focus on the bottom half of the speaker. We're gonna go ahead and again, take another paper plate, and this time we're going to hot glue our magnets right onto the middle. Our bottom half of the speaker is also going to need a suspension system to deal with the vibrations. In order to create the suspension system, all we have to do is again take another piece of paper plate and I'm just going ahead and cut out the flat portion of it. With the flat portion now removed, what we can do is go ahead and fold this in an accordion style, which that means is we fold it for, wrong, forward one ways and then we're going to flip it the opposite direction the next. So what we have here now is an accordion folded and we're going to cut it in half to create two. These will now act as our supporting for our speakers. All right, with our bottom of the speaker and our support system in hand, what we want to do is glue the bottom of these so the feet come out towards the outside of the plate as so. these planted, our next step is to go ahead and let it dry, but thinking ahead, we're going to put glue on top of here in order to go ahead and put our speaker bot, our speaker top right on top. So making sure everything lines up, what we want to do is take our top half of the speaker, go ahead and put it over our sack of magnets, and we're going to glue our suspension system as so. This way, we can see it move freely up and down over the stack of magnets. All that's left now is to remove the insulation surrounding the magnet wire in order to ensure a strong connection between our laptop, our phone, and our paper plate speaker. For simplicity purposes, I recommend this with parental supervision. I'll be using a lighter to burn off the insulation. You can always take fine grit sandpaper, uh, probably at least 800 to 1,000, and to rub it off. All right, all that's left now is to now connect our auxiliary cable, which is connected to my laptop, to our paper speaker using our gator clips. In order to connect our gator clips, we need to hook it up to our auxiliary cable. So this cable is currently hooked up. One end is plugged in to the laptop. You can also plug it into your phone and we need to connect this cable to our two lead wires here. So what I'm gonna do is hook up my two different gator clips to each of our lead wires. All right, and then I'm gonna hook the other ends onto our auxiliary cable. We want to make sure that there's a good strong connection on our auxiliary cable. So just make sure that the gator clips are biting nice and tight. And I like to put them on two different little ends here. So you can see and make sure that they're not touching. Now you can go ahead and test your speaker. And now for the moment of truth.
Well, it seems like it's working properly. However, the sound of the speaker is actually relatively low. So what I like to do is actually going to be doing a slight modification to it by using an amplifier to see what happens. So as I mentioned before, when I think about trying to make this stronger, I was going to use my amplifier. So what I have in hand here is my headphone amplifier. Uh, you can use other stereo amplifiers as well. They all function in a similar manner. If you look at the symbols, these are two for the output for my headphones. This is for the input of my audio. So just like before, my auxiliary cable that's connected to my laptop, I'm actually going to plug it into here. Right? And now we're going to take another auxiliary cable. And mine has an output for the 3.5 millimeter, same as this one. Or if by chance you happen to have one of these bigger and fatter ones, these are the uh, bigger quarter inch ones that are used more for like guitar amplifiers. My amplifier just happens to have a connection for it. And we're going to do the same exact thing as before. You want to make a nice strong connection. I would recommend to use the smaller cables if possible. These are pretty thick and it can be pretty touchy and sensitive in order to get it a really strong connection to them. Just like before, I'm going to connect one more towards the base and then connect this one strong and tight closer to the top, just like that. And you can go ahead and then test it once more. Now let's see how things work with our amplifier. Well, it seems like our paper speaker is working much better with the amplifier, as you can see with the vibrations on our paper plate speaker. What's happening is that there's an electrical current that is being sent through the voice coil that we have here being wrapped by our magnet wire. And so this coil ends up creating an electric field that interacts with the magnetic field created by our magnets at the bottom, right? Because these charges repel and attract each other, the voice coil ends up both attracting and repelling and creates that vibration we saw earlier. When these vibrations occur, it creates what we now know as sound waves or pressure waves. So there you have it. That's how you create your very own homemade paper speaker. I hope that by following my instructions, you're able to get something similar in, in output. In doing this, I hope that you're able to get a better understanding of not only how speakers work, but also understanding how the type of energy transformation that occurs in a speaker going from electrical to mechanical, as well as understanding how the vibrations end up creating pressure waves that we now know and call sound. So Learning Undefeated has lots of other cool science activity ideas. Visit us at learningundefeated.org slash at home science for some more cool experiments.